Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about chapter two, some of the um, more optional kinds of problems we can solve, but after walking around looking at you guys take that quiz, it seems like a lot of you are struggling. So um, instead of doing that, I'd like to go over the quiz. Um, I'm going to go through version A. Because it seems to have taken you guys a lot longer than it should. Um, all right, so let's start. What is the standard form of an exact ODE? What does an exact ODE look like? Yeah. M of x and M of x y dx plus n of x y dx. Right. You write something like this. And you can start to spot if it's an exact ODE. Part two said, what equation must be satisfied in order for this form to be exact? N of x equals to m of y. m y must be equal to partial, and these are partial derivatives, right? So that was the answer to that, right? So that should have taken you no time at all. That you should just know. It's like I asked you, what is your name? You don't think about it. Yes? Can you flip n Well, these, they would have to flip here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you wrote the n with the dx and the m with the dy, then you have to have ny with nx. But this is the notation that the books use, so it's, we're going to stick with that. Uh, yes? For the standard form, can I, can I write um, n plus n y pi equals n? Oh, instead of writing dx here, write a y prime here. That's also fine. Yes, that would be accepted. Right. They're really the same thing. One equation you just multiply through by dx. Right. So, Part three, okay, so I described a situation where there's a tank, I told you, you know, Q of T is the amount of pollutant in a tank at time T, Q0 is the initial amount, C in is the concentration of pollutant flowing in at a rate of R in, V0 is the initial volume, and R out is the rate which is flows out, blah, blah, blah. So I described all these and I told you the notation I want you to use. What ODE describes that situation? times CR. Uh, wait, which one was? The ODE. Oh. Oh, DQDT. Right. The QDT equals CNRN minus QT over VO V not uh, plus parentheses RN minus R out uh, T times R out. Right, that's what you're supposed to write down there. That's the ODE that describes the tank problem. Um, what would be the initial condition? Q of zero equals Q naught. Right, that's the notation. Okay, so that's that. Right, so yeah, problems one, two, and three, I expect you to fly through. It's not something that you do stay there and try to solve. This you should just know, right? Like I asked you, what is your name? You just write it down. You don't think about it. You don't figure it out, right? So that was all like, in under a minute, you should have written all this. Okay, so now let's, I actually gave you a problem here. Um, it's problem four on the version A, it was problem five on the other version, with the numbers changed. Okay, so I described a problem. A 200 gallon tank contains 100 gallons of water with 10 pounds of salt dissolved in it. Pure water flows into the tank at a rate of 12 gallons per minute. The well-stirred mixture is allowed to flow out at 10 gallons per minute. Let Q of T be the amount of salt in the tank at time T. Describe it with the appropriate ODE and initial condition. Right. So in part four, I asked you to pretty much regurgitate this, but plug in the numbers. Right. So once you got this right, part four was also easy. Um, um, so it says pure water was flowing in at 12 gallons per minute. What does that mean for the concentration in? Zero. Zero. Because pure water is coming in, there was no salt, so the concentration in was zero. So we move on to the next part. I know this is always Q. We were told the initial volume was 100 gallons, plus the rate in was 12, the rate out was 10, so I multiply that by T, and since the rate out is 10, I have to multiply that by 10. So really, if you had Q prime is equal to minus 10 Q over 100, plus 2t, that was the answer there. The initial condition was what? 
Well, it says a 200 gallon tank contains 100 gallons of water with 10 pounds of salt dissolved in it. 10 is the initial condition. You could have written 10 pounds if you want. Right there, I didn't particularly care about the units. I asked you for the units in one of them, but right there, I didn't really care if you were the units or not. Okay, so now in, that was part A of question four. Part B, find the general solution. What kind of equation is this? Separable. I can write this as dq over q equals minus 10 over 10 over plus 2t. T. T. And I can integrate both sides. This would be ln q. This side would be minus 5 ln 100 plus 2t, which is a constant. Right? This I can bring up to make the negative 5 power. The constant I can write as ln of a constant and add it to this, which makes it multiply. So this, this all becomes b. Right? So that was your function. That was the general solution. In C, I asked you to find the particular solution. How do we find the particular solution? Well, you apply the initial condition. So we know that q of 0 equals 10, which means Q is 10 when time is 0. Right. So this means that C is equal to, this would be 10 times 100 to the fifth. You could have left, left it like that, I wouldn't care, but scientific notation was okay. That's sort of 10 to the 11. So this means that Q is 10 to the 11, 100 plus 2T to the minus 5. And of course, if you simplified, a common factor of 2 was here. You could have simplified here. I'll, I'll go through that. But I thought I'd give the solution in this more general form. It's easier to simplify once you have the answer. D. What is the concentration in the tank when it overflows? Remember, I start with 200 gallons. I start with 100 gallons in a 200 gallon tank. And it is increasing by two gallons every minute. How long will it take to the tank, for the tank to overflow? I think the volume is two hundred. Right. You can even set it, right? So you set 100 plus 2t equals to 200, you would end up with t equals 50, right? So 50 minutes is when it overflows, right? Time of overflow. This means I can find the amount of salt in the tank at that time. Q of 50 is just going to be 11 times 200 to the minus 5. Right? What's the concentration? You have to divide it by the volume. This means the concentration at this point is just Q of 50 divided by the volume, which is just going to be 10 to the 11. 200 to the minus 5 divided by 200. In other words, 10 to the 11 times 200 to the minus 6. And I asked for the units here, it's pounds per gallon, right? And I asked you for the units here because I want you to remember you had to divide by the gallons, right? So that was the answer there. Okay. Problem 5. I asked you to solve an ODE. y to the x equals x to the fourth minus 3y over x. I already did the answers to this. It will appear on my website about an hour after class ends. So if you didn't catch all the answers, it's fine. I just want you to understand the process. So, and 5b was another ODE, this was dy dx Okay, what kind of equation is this one? It's not homogeneous. 
How do I know it's not homogeneous? I put a k here, I'm going to get a k to the fourth. Put a k here, I'm only going to get a k. If I factor out the common factor, I'm still going to have k's left over. So it's going to make a difference by putting k's inside. So it's not homogeneous. It is linear. This is a linear equation. It is not an exact equation, by the way, either because of this 3. If that 3 were a 1, it would actually be an exact equation. You could solve it that way. But it's not an exact equation because of that 3. It messes things up. Your my would be minus 3, and your nx would be minus 1. So they, it wouldn't be exact. So it's not exact, and it's, not, it's obviously not separable. It's not homogeneous, so the only other thing to think about is linear. It's actually linear. Excuse me? Yes. You can multiply it um, by um, x squared, though. Yeah, uh, an integrating factor. Sure. And then you get like um, 3x squared. Right, well, if you saw that, you could do it, but that sort of is harder. But, you know, we try to make our lives easy, right? Linear is much easier to deal with in general than the other. There was one problem in your homework where you needed an integrating factor with the exact equation, but um, right here, the first thing that you would check is separable and linear and all that. And linear, we actually got a hit already, so I wouldn't even look for to try to make it exact. That's what a linear equation looks like. y prime plus a function times y equals some function without y's in it. Right? So how do you... Um, e to the integral of 3 over x. Right, so now you need an integral factor. Which is e to the 3 ln x, which is just x cubed. And so you're going to multiply through by x cubed. This would be x to the 6. The right side always becomes the integrating factor times y, all derivative. And now you can integrate both sides. You get x cubed y is equal to x to the 7 over 7 plus c. Divide by x cubed on both sides. Wait, when you multiply, I thought you add them. Right? I did, yes. X cubed. All oh, right, I thought that was X squared. Yeah. So that was the solution there. I didn't give you an, 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 an initial condition, so we didn't need to find the C. That would have been the answer. <laughs> what kind of equation is this one? Separable. It's actually separable. And it's also exact. So there are a couple of ways you could actually do this one. So separable is probably the one you have seen before. But what is the issue with separable? Is there, there is actually no issue with separable. If I put this guy up here, it would have been a different story. Right, so we could have done this. And that. And you just integrate both sides. Which by the way, if I brought this to the other side, it would have ended up being an exact equation. So there are a couple ways you could have done this one. And so you'd integrate this with respect to y. <coughs> exact equations are always separable, right? No, they're not always separable. Equals x plus minus. Let's see. So I could write something like. You could have left it like that. If you did it at the exact way, though, you'd probably draw everything to one side and it would look something like that. Right, but it, it right. So if you saw the exact equation, your solution would look something like this. Yeah. Yeah, but then the quiz um, asked to solve it in terms of I mean for a y. Yeah. 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 I actually put it to x plus sine x over oh. sine y. Oh, yeah. That would yes, that. Yeah, if you yeah, solve for y would be horrible. Yeah. Yeah, I'll like that. <laughs> Look, we get pass on that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, I left it to x plus sine x over cosine y. 2x plus sine x divided by cosine y? Yeah, plus c over, over cosine y. No, I'm sorry, minus cosine y. Basically, like I move it to the other side. To to oh, you just yeah. move the y over here, yeah. and then left everything over here? Did you have a C? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. 
Like any any iteration of this equation. <laughs> Right, you leave the two x on one side, bring everything on the other side. I don't care. This is this is fine. Um, should I even go over the bonus problems? So the bonus problems are from chapter three. So so one and two is from section three point one, and problem three is from three point two. But I guess we should just go to the. If you have any questions from the yeah. Well, I brought this to that side. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. I could have made these negative and those positive. And those positive. It's, okay. it's the same. I know algebra, so any <laughs> any form of this same equation that you write down, I'll understand that it's the same. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, so questions from the review or I guess from the last two homework. Uh, 2.9, I believe, yes, it's due today. Yeah, you, we've done everything that you need for that homework. Yeah, the other stuff I wanted from chapter two, it's sort of optional. I, like I, I don't have to tell you about it, but I think it's good that I do. So, um, everything that you'll need, I've taught you already. Yeah. Several versions. Let me see yours. Uh, this is uh, six x squared plus one minus one. Plus y minus one minus ten y minus x. Um, did anyone find the integrating factor for something like that? Or did you try? Well, you could check if it was exact. If you take the derivative of this with respect to y, right? You'd only get one. You took the derivative of that with respect. That's 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 exact. That's exact. You don't need an integrating factor. Remember the standard form that I made you write down on the quiz? Should be a plus sign here, so you'd rewrite it as that. And then you'd see it's exact. It's already intact. This we don't yeah, that's there was another one that we didn't integrate. I know there was one, but that's not it. That's that's not we don't need an integrating factor. Um here Can you go over 2.6, number 8? I don't know. I think that's, I think that's, uh, 2.9? Yeah, I think it was in 2.9. In 2.6, they're all exact. They shouldn't, you shouldn't need. I don't know what this problem is. I'll just start this off. Um, so so you go here, you'd realize, oh, it's not separable, it's not linear. And so you try to check if it's exact, so you try to rewrite this. And if you rewrite it, you get something like 4x cubed 
y plus y squared dx plus 2x to the fourth plus 3xy dy. Because then you'd want to check m sub y, which would give you 4x cubed plus 2y. And you check n sub x, which would give you 8x cubed plus 3y. And you realize, oh, they're not the same. So it's not exact. Right? And it's not homogeneous either, because we get a k to the fourth factor here, and only a k squared there. So the k's won't kill each other. And so we're sort of in trouble. So now we have to, start, we have to try to make it exact. And so we're going to try those two equations, right? So there are two equations that we have to look at. It's m sub y minus m sub x over n. And you want to check, is that a function of x? And then there was also the n sub x minus n y over n. And you wanted to check, is that a function of y? Right? And if either one of those give you one of these favorable, situa favorable situations, that will actually tell you the integrating factor is going to either be that, or the integrating factor will be this. So now you just check them, right? So if you took my minus nx over n, you get 4x cubed plus 2y minus 8x cubed plus 3y minus 3y over n, which is 2x to the 4th plus 3xy. Does that really give you a function of x only? I don't think so. So we can check the other one. That's 8x cubed plus 3y. 4x cubed minus 2y over the n is 4x cubed y plus y squared. This one simplifies to 4x cubed plus y over, this is y times 4x cubed plus y. This cancels, you get 1 over y. Ah, that's just a function of y. Which means I can have an integrating factor mu equals e to the integral of 1 over y. It's e to the ln y is just y. Which means if I multiply this through by y, I should get an exact equation. So I would have 4x cubed y squared plus y cubed 2x to the fourth y plus 3xy squared. Partial with respect to y would give me 8x cubed y plus 3y squared. Partial with respect to x would give me 8x cubed y plus 3y squared. And now they're the same, so we're exactly and continue. So there are cases where it's not exact, but really it's none of the others. It's not separable, it's not homogeneous, it's not linear. And so you're thinking, oh, maybe I can transform into an exact equation, which means you have to check these two equations. Right? These are the only situations I told you about. There are many other situations. But in this case, this one worked out, so you know that this was the integrating factor. And then doing that makes it exact, and you continue. It's a good thing to know that kind of problem. I, 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 won't, I don't think I put one like that on the test. But yeah, it's okay. good to know. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, um, it's from 2.9. So we had 1 plus t squared y double prime plus 2ty prime plus 15t to the minus 2 equals 0. I know that y of 1 is 10, y prime of 1 is minus 5, 
I'll let you guys deal with the initial condition on your own. I guess solving the problem is the main part. Who knows how to tackle that one? Yeah. Reduction of order, right, which is a very important topic, and something like this will be on this test. V is equal to y prime. Right. You said V equals y prime, which means that V prime would be y double prime. So you can actually rewrite this. 1 plus t squared times V prime plus 2tv plus 15t to the minus t equals 0. And now it's a first order linear which means we can deal with that one. So we have v prime plus 2t over 1 plus t squared v is equal to minus 15t to minus 2 over 1 plus t squared. And so we find the integrating factor. What's the integrating factor here? E to the integral of 2t plus. E to the integral of 2t over 1 plus t squared dt. That just gives us e to the ln of 1 plus one. t squared, which is just 1 plus t squared. Right, which you can have seen here that it was already in a nice form from here, from the get go. Right, that's why you got the same guy back. So. So this side just becomes 1 plus t squared times y prime, v prime equals minus 15 t to the minus 2. Integrate both sides. So this is add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. C, so your V would be 15T to the minus 1 over 1 plus T squared plus C over 1 plus T squared, which means your V, remember, was actually Y prime, so you have Y prime is equal to all of this. And which means your y is just the integral of all of that. T to the minus one over one plus t squared. C over one plus t squared. Right. So you integrate that, and you get your answer. How do you how do you integrate something like that? What's that? Ln of 1 plus No. Tan 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 inverse. 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 Tan inver
what does it look like? So it's another 2.9 question. One of the last ones. What is it? Again, we do the same trick because we only see double prime and prime, so we can do a reduction of order. V equals y prime, so v prime equals y double prime. So this becomes 50t squared v prime plus v cubed equals 50t v. No, you can find it later, right? So you'd have C tan inverse here. Right? And this would give you the Y. So you can plug in the first initial condition and get that guy. Well, remember, these numbers will be known at this point. Yeah, but then there would be two unknowns, right? C and B. Yes. There would be another one, E. That's why you need two initial conditions. So you plug in the first one. Right, and then the y prime you had here, right? So the top, the first initial condition you'd plug into whatever answer you got here. The second initial condition you'd plug into this one, and you'd have two equations, two unknowns. You get a system of equations you can solve. Okay. Hey, how about this one? Let's say we um, subtract 50 TV uh, from both sides to get um, uh, 50 T Q V uh, D V D T. What, what do you mean? 50 T V? Uh, and then um, I, I changed um, V prime to D V D T and then multiply D T throughout the year. I think we should look for an integrating factor. Yeah, it made, made it into an exact equation basically. Right, so you wrote this as dv dt. Yeah, that's on six, right? And multiply through by dt. Yeah. So you had 50t squared dv um, plus v cubed. Well, v minus 50t plus v cubed. dt equals zero. Yeah. <coughs> Right, and that 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 was exact. Um, and I have uh, and I had to prove it, so then that would be. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think the problem with this one is actually a Bernoulli equation. What? Which is one of the things I wanted to tell you about. So I guess this one doesn't count. Don't worry about that one, I'll take it on. What number was it? It's the last one in 2.9. Number 50. That's why I wanted to do the whole I guess I got too excited. These kids were most definitely not for me. It was right here. I didn't tell you about it yet. I guess. <laughs> you can solve it with a substitution, but I didn't tell you what kind of substitution to look for. What? No, it's, it's more like v equals y to the 1 minus n, where n is this guy. So you'd have been 3. Where that came from? <laughs> well, when I say about Bernoulli equations, you should find out. Okay, 
So, any other questions? Did you guys look at the review at all? Like any of the past finals? Were they easy? Like you didn't have any questions on them? Like if it's a Y, that means it's a Y it's a DB, right? DB equals to Y. Just to clearing it up. No, no, on top, on top, on top. Maybe something to B equals to Y prime. So if it's a Y, then it equals to a DB. I'm not sure what you're saying. Like, just a Y, not Y prime. No, B is equal to Y prime. That's, that's not perfect. Yeah, yeah but then on the quiz, you put a Y instead of a Y prime. You put a bonus question. On this quiz? I think it's about the first bonus question. First one, first bonus question. Yeah, this why I couldn't solve. We're talking about the one we did today. Yeah. yeah the first we did today had nothing. Look, nothing like this. Okay, that's chapter three. This is chapter two. The quiz question was like y double prime plus four y prime plus three y. Yeah. Just the one you put for the y if you're substituting. Are you substituting? Are you no, no. Oh, okay. This one Those of you who did chapter one homework and really remember, they asked you to do this weird thing where they say pretend y is e to the rt and saw, find what r is. That's how you'd actually approach it. So if you assume y equals e to the rt, this guy becomes r squared plus 4r plus 3 equals 0. You'd be able to factor that. So you get r equals minus 3 and r equals minus 1. And since y is this, your y would actually be constant e to the minus 3t plus a constant e to the minus t. That, that would be the general solution, which is chapter 3. It's, it's actually very different from this. Because the prime is not to a power. This is actually linear. So it's a second order linear. This wasn't linear. So they're very different problems. You're talking about this review, right? You were asking? No, the one I put on my website. We're actually to look at the past finals. So go to the finals, do this problem from this final, blah, blah, blah. Well, this has been there more than a week now. Did anyone look at it? No. I didn't know <laughs> You guys have a test this week or like? No, we don't have a test this week. It's Monday. It's Monday. Remember? Yeah, Monday. We still have like two more days. As I mentioned, I was posting the review in class, and I'm pretty sure I sent an email after I posted saying I posted a review. Uh, I never got the email. I didn't get this email. Yeah, none no, of no, got the email. Yeah, well, there are some problems from the past finals that are, will be similar to the ones I'm putting on the test, and I said, oh, try these. Okay? So, uh, professor, so the first exam is changed to next week? No. No, it's this way. <laughs> it's Wednesday. <laughs> nice try, though. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions on linear, exact, homogeneous tank problems? <laughs> yeah? When you was doing what you were doing, partial Yeah. Like, how do you do that? Go to the Turing Center and relearn. Yeah. Crap. That's Calc 2. I can't go over that now. Um, can I go over uh, that? how to identify a separable again, something that you talked about plus... Um, oh, separable just means you can write it like f of y dy equals g of x dx. Right, where you can write it as a function purely of y times dy and a function purely with, of x times dx. Yeah, I understand the, so it takes a little obvious. I understand the concept, but you talked about something constant that came and get the, get the same... The, there's the one with M and N? Yeah. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the exact equation, I'm talking about 
um, in the on the in the last question asked about um, the first second the, no, the first two questions about something plus plus something to get oh my god I don't know how to explain. was it was on the quiz just now no the last question quiz two let's see if I have a quiz I have an example of quiz two yeah the first two no, this is this is the quiz today. No, this is quiz two. This was that. This is February. Okay. That's when you read this. Okay. I guess we can stop there, and there are no other questions. Okay.